To the viewers of Air Time Journal, a very warm greetings. Today, to have an interesting virtual discussion on all about data, so I have Miss Priyanka Jain along with me. She is president and CEO of IIN, where she leads analytics and data science SWAT team. She is also an experienced author, keynote speaker, data consulting advisor. She has almost twenty years of experience in handling data. One of her books, Behind Every Good Decision. Became Amazon's bestseller in the data science. So that book is, I think, uh, right behind uh, Miss Priyanka Jain now. Uh, so uh, with around twenty plus years of experience in data, so I thought you would be the right person to ask this particular question. So you would have seen the evolution of data science, right, like throughout your journey. So could you brief us how was the evolution of data science? Yeah, Jagan. So my my experience of data science started with with when I was in my doing my masters. and you know working on projects which were applied statistics and mathematics doing simulation modeling uh and using ai for you know updating routing table or building a reverse speciation model for radioactive spill site uh and at that point they weren't uh, you know these uh the the tools of for data science the libraries that we have right now pre trained models half built models they didn't exist um feature stores of course are very very new in last couple of years so there's lot of new development in terms of how data can be quickly accessed how much data can be processed uh using gpus and cpus uh what algorithms are available which are already available in pre built uh things that are automated in in various ways so in essence you know what used to take us you know months to do we would submit code we would hope it will not crash at back in next morning and hope that you know the labs will the uh, you know and we would distribute our code manually into different servers you know all of those days writing scripts for distributing codes from there to now where it's all automated you 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 know you go on cloud and you can stand up your instance of gcp or aws in in maybe half an hour and and start your uh, you know kick off your sage maker and start as python script and it's an minutes and hours it's a different deal i mean you can and you can change your gpus cpus in flight uh how what you need your compute power you can uh, download the pre trained models you can use libraries which already exist you know it's a different world altogether and and it's it's fabulous because those things have now been so automated and and um made so easy that now you can do and uh, you can go ahead and sort of be on the edge cutting edge and and push it forward in terms of the amount of data you can process the kind of number of algorithms you can try you don't now now need to guess and say you know i think well, this is what i'm going to go for and this is all i can try you can try you know quite a few algorithms before you say this is the optimal given given this stage so we've come a long way and i'm really excited with where it continues to grow because the number amount of data is continuing to grow as you know as we speak um, each one of us is creating data ourselves uh, so i'm i'm really excited and and uh, as to where we are going and you know uh, like for example the latest and greatest is um, you know like for example feature store which didn't exist till about even 2 years ago so there is no new concepts which are coming up which is making Uh, data science easy and it's changing so rapidly you know what you knew 6 months ago is no more holding true uh, the limitations are uh, you know going away which is exciting yes uh, so you mm -hmm. were like i could actually sense uh, right so the my excitement that you were holding out for long time on uh, data science and all that and uh, possessing two masters like one on math and other one on analytics if i'm not wrong so that that's not quite easy because it cannot be the interest on maths or analytics cannot be created in certain i mean it cannot pop up immediately so you would be having it right from your childhood so how was that interest towards analytics or maths so that has uh, uh, you know like inculcated in you yeah i think i had the math in me you know just you you, you some some of us are they are love puzzles i love patterns i love you know organizing so there are some of us who are wired that way and math was very easy and it came easy to me it made sense uh, from even before i saw something you know the theorems and the proofs and the you know all of that just made sense uh, whether it was geometry or whether it is calculus it just made sense to me 
So that was easy. Statistics, not so much. So my first experience of statistics was, of course, my during my bachelor's. Um, and I was okay with that. I was, as I, you know, I was beginning to see, but it just, in statistics, one plus one is not necessarily two. It is getting to two. It is, you know, there's percentage probabilities. I love probabilities, probabilities and probabilistic theories. Uh, but this whole estimation was very interesting. Uh, not something I naturally gravitated to. But then in my first master's, uh, you know, I began to use that to solve some problem. And I, when I, when I was, when I was using something specifically to solve a problem at hand, it started becoming my friend. And I started understanding the power of it that if I could iterate over and reduce the loss function or cost function, that I could make something uh, more precise and reverse engineer it. And, and that was, that was ex exciting. Then in my second master's, I actually taught statistics to um, statistics seniors, like seniors who were doing statistics themselves. I was teaching uh, as, a, as, a, um, as a lecturer and then as a, a, a assistant uh, teacher. Uh, and that's what, you know, when you, when you want to learn something, you'll teach that, right? So I, okay. I learned statistics a lot more uh, during those times because I really had to understand, you know, what is this bell curve that I just, you know, you assume, like, what does this even mean? What is this normal distribution? What happens if it's not normal? What happens to your, you know, your models and so on, you know, so I just kind of started understanding it a lot more when I started teaching it. So I would say, you know, math was definitely my friend from the beginning, statistics I made friends with. Um, and I won't say that I still understand it fully as well as I understand math. Um, so I'm still, I'm still always learning and, you know, with this, the way the data science and AI is evolving, there's this almost new stuff all the time. So I'm always learning, which is great because I like learning. Yes. So I could say a huge fraction of Shakuntala Devi in you now. Oh my gosh. No, no, no. That's that. She's a different. <laughs> yeah. I saw that movie. It's quite, quite amazing. What a, yeah. what a woman. Exactly. Compute so. power in her. Yeah. So there was an interesting statement from you. Uh, data is a new currency and data literacy is the language of the business. Could you actually explain the funda behind this statement? In a way, a uh, lot of what we do is driven by, by you know, money and dollars. All our e-commerce, all our businesses are driven by that fundamental for a really long time. And that made sense in, you know, 70s and 80s and 90s. And what's happening more recently is that that data is becoming that that currency data is becoming that that if you have data you have an asset and it is valuable so it's in a way it's becoming that that currency and and what that is making us do or want or forcing us to do is that those of us who speak the language of data are are having an edge because we are quickly able to understand what this means use it to our advantage Whereas the organizations who are no, who don't have folks in their uh, in their employees who understand what to do with data are going to lag behind uh, because they're going to be overwhelmed with like okay what this data says but how over this you know I've um, we do we do data science consulting and uh, and a lot of times I will go into initial my initial interactions when we start out with a client and we start with understanding of what you know how what is it that we are trying to do in this project. And we'll hear from some of our stakeholders, you know, I want to understand this, but this goes up and we do this and this goes down and this, you know, and in essence, when, when their 20 minutes of rambling is over, it's very clear they are overwhelmed with the amount of data they have. It's not clear to them what is telling, it is telling them and, and they want to quickly make sense of it. It's not easy. And so those, those organizations and uh, uh, who invest in their employees to understand and use data effectively are going to have an advantage over those of us, those organizations who are still saying, well, I'm gonna run this by gut, or I know how businesses work. I know, for example, I have a manufacturing business, uh, paper manufacturing. I know how we've done paper manufacturing for hundreds of years. I'm gonna continue doing it that way. And I'm not necessarily going to use the data. That means, you know, your machines used, going to, used to have downtime of, you know, sometimes three days, five days. They're going to continue the same way. Whereas your other competitor, your new manufacturing units are down to half, you know, one minute downtime, half an hour downtime. 
because they are now able to predict which machine is going to do go down and and thereby have greater efficiency which means they will have better cost which means they will have competitive advantage over you you're going to lose business they're going to gain business and you know and they're going to you know all of that they they'll have better ebitda they will have better uh you know work experience for employees everything will be better for them versus you so you're going to lose business and you're going to go out of business versus not so in truth data is now the new currency and all of those all of us who speak the language data will have the advantage over those who don't so it's time we start learning this new skill as soon as we can thank you thanks thank that was in uh, no like a deepest thank you from your side Uh, so uh, could you also please uh, share us about the uh, swat team that you are currently leading in iang and what all the key outcomes uh, probably they keep on generating on sure jagan so so for us uh, for me um analytics and algorithms are useless until they have an impact until they make a product team do something different than they what they were doing a marketing team helps them identify some key segments that they should go after uh it helps a ux team deliver better product unless there is a uh so what from algorithms and models and whether done in excel or whether done in python or whatever in between the, if the so what is in there it's useless and so it's it's important for us as a swat team we use a framework called badir b a d i r it stands it's an acronym for these five steps called business question analysis plan data collection insights and recommendation it looks fairly simple and intuitive um uh, fairly but it's fairly deep we use that framework uh to go and solve problems and we work backwards so our, we use first principle thinking of what is going on why do you think it's going on and then let's start solving that from there on and when you do it when you set up your projects that way then first of all this framework enables us fast very fast delivery so you know we are able to come in and solve very complex problems and improve that already improved fraud model by 0.25% within 8 weeks because of this this framework the systematic way of thinking the other is um our team can actually um parachute it's like a swat team which can parachute in any situation whether it's the oil fields and creating alert there or to security breach and creating an, an ai model which understands security and 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 gives that uh, builds an alerting system for agents to look at these interesting patterns of transactions where which are beginning to happen we can go traverse any industry and any function because of this framework and thereby we are a swat team which can go in from any context any industry any function using this framework to bring out the knowledge of the subject matter expert on a piece of paper with our uh, you know targeted questioning and and our own understanding of how things work we put that together and we build um, you know we feature we are known for our feature engineering we are known for building fast like machine learning models we are also known for solving problems in as simple and as fast a manner as possible so we don't complexify stuff if if things can be done with correlation analysis we don't need to build a you know machine learning model you know and probably you can't even do that if it can be done with correlation analysis so really understanding how far, how you can keep it simple and solve it the most fastest possible manner uh, also trading of explainability with accuracy all those things um that's what we do that's what our that's what our swat team is known for doing we we are basically experts in in this field and we come in and solve problems fairly complex problems fairly quickly great great that that thanks for uh, sharing that particular aspect and uh, now let me rewind to your younger period you know to know how did the interest of data is actually inculcated in you so you can share you can share an incident or uh, any technology that actually created an impact in you towards your data uh you know i so i as i shared i loved uh, i loved uh, uh, science and i loved math and i obviously i mean my my dad was an inventor so um i saw engineering and science very early on in in you know and we used to have room or room or rooms or spaces dedicated to experiments and open electronics and things being experimented on welding soldering i mean i was doing welding and soldering when i was like 10 year old 8 year old trying to connect things and look at the circuits and seeing how things flow and 
and so on and seeing the bulb light up and when it doesn't have a resistor it doesn't light up so those those things happened very early on so i was very interested in seeing phenomena and experiencing it hands on and seeing like how things really work and and you know when and mechanical as well we were used to do a lot of mechanical stuff you know how do you how do you use lever how do you use pulley system you know you twist something you tighten something spring system all of those things so that's what sort of things that i grew up with which was very exciting so that got me thinking in that way of causal you know you action reaction what happens um the way i think i got into data is again with my with my first masters with when i had to solve problems uh using massive amount of you know simulated data but basically you know there's a spill there's a radioactive spill which happened at a site how are you going to remediate it how are you going to make that uh, site non hazardous and for that you had to run massive amount of simulation back calculation to understand what really started it started out with this is a long, non, application of non linear regression how what really started uh, you know 20 years ago 30 years ago what happened and for that you had to process and simulate large amounts of data to figure out what could have happened uh, at that point and thereby what should we how do we remediate this site and so that's when i started seeing wow how much power data holds when when you have points which are lining up in one line it means something versus you know when you have points going all over the place it actually has uh, it it tells you something very very specific um and then then my second masters when i did my uh, you know computer engineering and and started using that for other applications and learning statistics in a deeper way is when i started seeing the power of data but all that was still theoretical then when i did my first analyst job at at adobe and i <laughs> the amount of data i saw i had not seen that before you know millions of customers and uh, all their transactions all their downloads and what they're doing on there and then having the opportunity to use that information to ex- to improve revenue and and upgrades and and so on and launching those those campaigns and seeing the results come out in in a week or two weeks like we just generated a couple of million dollars with this campaign that was mind boggling to me how numbers can turn into revenue like that connection was when i first started seeing that at at adobe and that was very satisfying to see like you know you make these changes or you launch something and you see this effect like you you offer a new product and you have you have optimized your subject line you have optimized your call to action whatever else and you see this effect and when you don't do it well what happens and how do you troubleshoot when things don't go well how do you troubleshoot when a product is broken so all of that in in seeing that you can use data to actually troubleshoot So that was the beginning of my falling in love with data and seeing the power it holds to tell us things quickly versus me thinking and sitting and thinking oh what might have gone wrong well i have data i can actually go back and see oh you know the page didn't load for this set of people and they couldn't even click check out so they couldn't order and thereby our order rate is so low right lo and behold we have the crystal ball which we didn't have before so cool. probably you know the statement where you mentioned to remediate the site or you no know, like from a nuclear uh, uh, station or something so there you were looking out for data which is almost like 20 to 30 years old so this is actually giving me a thought that probably in future whatever i come across any problem statement my mind immediately will run towards okay there should be a data where the, you know this particular problem statement can be resolved so that, that is okay. really a, a surprising probably interesting aspect as well thanks for sharing it so uh, sure. what 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 would you suggest for the younger generation now uh, to have a successful start in their data science career that's a great question it's a loaded and it's a, it's, a, it's a question i get asked a lot so one thing i will say is just because it's a keyword doesn't mean it's a, it's a, it's a career for you so please uh, do yourself a favor and follow your passion and find your passion i think a lot of people these days are chasing keywords and buzzwords and saying oh this looks like hot let me just go for it and they're doing themselves a huge disservice and others who going to experience them in their career i mean i've seen some horrible analysts who should be actually you know baking cakes they should not be doing analysis but they're there just because they think that this is a keyword just because something is a keyword and buzzword it's better that you find your passion and you're good at it you will grow in that 
versus catching on to something which is a keyword and buzzword and, and you know getting on that bad wagon when you're not good at it. Now, once you have established that you this is a passion for you. So for example, you love math and you love solving puzzles and you love putting two and two together. Uh, you love Sudoku or you know whatever that is. Once you know that this is something that you enjoy doing, this is in tune with you, then then get skilled up. And you again, um, yes, you need foundational skills in in you know the tools that you're going to use. For example, you know Python and and Excel and and uh, you know understanding how the uh, the cloud infrastructure these days, whether it's AWS and GCP, everywhere you can Google Colab, you can use. Um, a uh, lot of these services which are publicly available, Alteryx, there are a lot of these services which are available to you for you to play with, right? So learning these toolkits and methods is very important. A tool, a tools are very important. But what's even more important is understanding how to solve business problem, which is a methodology issue, not, not a, you know, how do you set up an experiment? How, how, you, how do you set up a successful experiment? There's a method to this madness. There's not just like, oh, let's try something and see what happens. How are you going to try and make sure that you have a proper control against your test? Uh, how do you set, set up a multifactorial, uh, uh, you know, uh, full factorial design? How do you make sure that things are comparable and when you come to a decision that this caused this is actually accurate? So learning methodologies is very, very important, more important than almost the tools. The tools you will learn, right? You know, you learn, you learn Python, you can pretty much learn R or SAS or, you know, Ruby on Rails or what, whatever else. But, um, but it's, it's basically making sure that you understand the methodology and that's where, um, you know, a framework like Bader, it's available in my book called Behind Every Good Decision. It's available on, on Kindle and Audible, as well as print copy. Picking up a framework that gives you how to problem solve with data is very important. And learning that is very important. So keep that focus. The other thing is uh, making sure that you get to apply it live. Uh, theoretical learning uh, is, is great. And a lot of I interview, I mean, we are always hiring, so we have at any given time, we have four or five positions open. Um, we, we find a lot of candidates who apply who have just seen data in, in theoretical world and the real data, the real world data. I mean, what you see in Kaggle, downloaded from Kaggle, is very cleaned up and almost, I would say, nonsensical data. You don't get that kind of data in the real world. You don't even know what data to get in the real world. You get a question. Somebody comes and says, hey, uh, my production efficiency is really down. Or my, for example, my last year's, um, uh, we have our, our net sales this, this year, this month is down 20% from last year. This is the kind, this is how data science starts. Data, data science doesn't start with you giving you, somebody giving you a trove of data and saying, find insights in it. Um, and so that's something to understand that you need to be able to solve business problem. That's what data science is. Data science is to be able to solve business problems using data. And uh, you know, focus on that, focus on learning those, those skills, learning Python and uh, understanding libraries and learning. Uh, that's not enough. There's a lot more. Got, got, got it. Thank you. Thank you for it. And next, I have an interesting segment. So probably I just wanted to uh, understand few uh, interesting part of your uh, journey. Uh, so first, uh, it is a sort of uh, coffee questions where uh, you know, like I'll be asking quick questions and it could be a one word reply from your side. Okay, so the best book that fascinated you the most? Um, let me just, I'm very bad at names. So ask and it's, ask and it is given. Okay, cool. So recent technology that has attracted you the most? Auto ML and ML ops okay. uh, technologies. So especially in operations uh, industry, like where IT operations is ML ops is playing a major uh, role these days. So the most memorable moment in your professional life? I would say any, there are lots of moments where I have had one experiment run and we have improved our, our, uh, conversion rate by 50%. Those kind of moments are very, very satisfying for me, where we see, you know, we launch something and within two months or three months, we are having an N, N factor impact, 50% improvement, you know, 
Um, I once built a <clears throat> model for Adobe, a uh, lookalike model for Adobe, where I took an untouched base of 50 million trial donors. Nobody had looked at that data and found uh, found 2.5 or and you know millions of uh, lookalike Acrobat customers launched launched um, Acrobat products to them and improved uh, uh, improved uh, revenue by 2x or 3x for Acrobat. That's very satisfying. Those those X effects are very satisfying for me. Thank you. And your favorite mathematician? My favorite mathematician. I I recently saw, saw the movie Shakuntala Devi, so I love that. I loved. I, it was mind boggling. Yeah. Cool. Uh, fine. So before we end up, so I just wanted to have a small, uh, uh, you know, like a small quick task to you. So if you get a magical power to go back to history. And solve a particular problem of your choice. It could be any problem or any, you know, like a famous problem. So with data, so what would you actually pick? You know, I would love to solve the problem of, um, and I talk about this a lot. Treasures. There's okay. so many. Um, what do they call shipwrecks, which happened historically, and so much treasure was lost. Historical treasures, which were lost. I would love to use data science to identify and find those treasures and recover them, uh, and and you know make sure that those are available in some museums or whatever else for people to people to you know see treasures from thousands of years ago. What did they look like historically? Perfect. I'm 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 really surprised with that response. Thank you. Thank you for that. And yes, with this we would uh, no like we have done with all our uh, questions and. I would like to thank you for your time, for having your time here, and you know, like sharing your certain in, uh, insights on your journey on data science and what the youngsters has to focus on and how should they focus. And you have also explained about your IN and uh, SWAT team. So thanks for thanks for taking your time, uh, Miss Priyanka Jain. It was a wonderful Absolutely. session here. Pleasure, pleasure being here. Thank you, Jain. Thank you, thank you. Bye bye.